Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our virtual open evening. We really hope that you've enjoyed all the resources um, that you've looked at so far. This is our live Q&A portion of the event for animal care. Um, and I've got a couple of our animal care staff with us today um, to answer any of your questions. So um, we've got Lydia and Jane. And without further ado, I'm just going to hand you over to them so that they can introduce themselves and just tell you a bit about the course. Um, if you do have any questions at all, please pop them in the Q&A box and we'll get them get around to them all this evening for you. I'll hand you over to Lydia. Hi, so uh, like Meg said, my name's Lydia. I am the section manager for the animal uh, management department. Being with the college, this will be my 14th academic year this year. So we've been here forever. Um, and uh, yeah, just really looking forward to meeting some new faces this year. I'll pass you over to Jane. Hi, uh, my name's Jane. I'm one of the lecturers in the animal care department. Um, I've been with the department for six years, I think now, um, and work across FE and HE. Um, and likewise, looking forward to meeting you in September. Lovely. So we've not actually had any questions come through. We don't tend to get them sort of first thing. So um, while we wait for some questions to, to come through the Q&A box, um, maybe we can just talk about all the different kinds of animals we've got, because that's all I want to hear about really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So if I, uh, shall I jump in first and then Jane add any in that I, that I miss off? Yeah. Um, so huge range of different animals for students to work with, um, from, you know, invertebrates all the way up to sort of larger mammals. So you know we've got scorpions and and stick insects and all of those kinds of things um tarantulas rep, reptiles so snakes and lizards tortoises terrapins all, all the sort of uh you know a bit more exciting stuff and then the furry stuff we've got uh, rabbits guinea pigs uh, all different rodents so you know your rats hamsters mice dagoos and then some more exotic uh, rodents so things like um zebra mice and um oh what's the one with the fluffy tail Jim? oh chinchillas and the, the new little gray mice what are they called anyway lots of lovely exotic um exotic rodents and then uh we're really really fortunate that we get to bring our own dogs in so we have uh, dogs that you can work with uh, so I've got my two dippy cockapoos that come in Jane's got a lovely spaniel that she brings in with her so you know you get to work with those guys We've also got uh, goats, poultry, um, aviary birds, and uh, three very cute, very straggly little alpacas at the minute who are only babies and they joined us at the end of the last academic year. So they're, they're, they've got a bit of growing to do, but they are they are with us as well. So yeah, all sorts. And we're also really fortunate that we get to work with some of the livestock from the farm. So we run a farming module on our second year. So we've got, you know, the sheep and the cows and stuff down there as well. Yeah, um, we've also got some cats in the cattery. Oh, yeah. And yes. um, we can also dip in onto equine as well and do a little bit of work with the horses on there as well. So, yeah, really fortunate. Yeah, absolutely. Massive uh, variety there. <laughs> um, I think it's many people's favourite part of the campus, the Animal Care Centre. <laughs> um, so we've had some questions already, so I'll start firing them off. Um, uh, so someone's asked, do you, we know what the times and dates will be at? So like timetables for next year or when will students find that out? Yeah, so um, we're a super, super large department. So we've got about 14 different groups of students. Um, so if you're on a level three programme, you're not going to be the only level three group. So there's sort of six level three groups, all with slightly different timetables so that, you know, we're staggering the usage of the college and we're staggering the, the animal usage for welfare purposes and stuff like that. So you will find out your timetable and your days in at college when you enrol. As a bit of a rough guide, the level threes tend to be three days of the week. The level twos, we're looking at four days of the week um, as a bit of a rough guide. Enrolment um, is the 23rd and 24th of August and teaching starts week commencing the 6th of September. Time wise, we run from 9.30 till 4.30. So we have a, a morning break, sort of 10.45 ish, uh, lunch breaks and then a, an afternoon break as well, um, depending on if you're on practicals or not, really. So that's that's a bit of a rough, a rough time scale. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, right. So next question. Bear with me. I want to go in order so I don't miss any. Um, <laughs> So the next one is someone did ask when did the student packs 
the welcome packs come out. So I've already answered that in the chat, but I will just reiterate that for everyone. Um, they've been sent out today, so they should be arriving with you um, either tomorrow or early next week. Um, so if you don't receive yours sort of by mid to late next week, do get in touch um, with our marketing team um, and we'll be happy to help. I'll put an email bot, uh, in the chat so you can get in touch if you don't receive yours. And um, they are just for offer holders. So if you haven't had your offer yet, you, you won't have had it um, sent out. So the next one is, is there a minimum number of hours for work experience each year? Yes, yeah, so if you're on our level three program, it's um, a minimum 150 hours per year for your uh, program of study. Um, and then there's an additional 150 hours. I'm right on there, Jane, for the CDF um, sort of separate small qual as, as well. Yeah. Um, for the level for the level two, it's 75 hours now um, for the qual. That's just changed on the new spec and for HE, um, it's 150 hours as well. Lovely. Um, something we often get asked, um, we've not been asked this, but I just thought I'd ask it anyway, because um, I know a lot of people often ask is, um, do students get any help with finding work experience if they're struggling to find it themselves? Yes, yeah, absolutely. So we've got a huge bank, a huge sort of uh, yellow pages, if you like, if you don't know what that is, a bit like a Google, I suppose, phone numbers. <laughs> um, so we've got a huge bank of phone numbers um, of you know people that have offered work placement before um and our work experience coordinators can help you find a placement we do like to put the ownership on students to you know ring up and try and arrange an interview for yourself and, and really make it more of a real world experience but we absolutely are there to help and we always make sure that all placements are checked for health and safety purposes as well before we're happy for you to go so it is something that we can absolutely help with Fantastic, thank you. Um, next question, is there a pastoral team at the college? Um, I suppose um, that might cover ALS or it might cover student services, so um, maybe we could talk about both of those. Yeah, absolutely. So if I start, um, we've kind of got a bit of a, a several pronged approach to pastoral care. So um, you, for your academic course, you have a course manager, so you'll have sort of a you know, like when you're at school, you have a form tutor, you'll have a course manager who will be in charge of looking after you on a daily basis to do with your curriculum. Um, there'll also be a progress tutor who will be there to help pick up, you know, if you're falling behind a little bit or you need a bit of extra support or anything like that, they'll be there to help you as well. So they'll do tutorial sessions and things like that. Then there's also a, a more pastoral team, so a sort of a student services team, like a welfare team who are there to support with, you know, advice and guidance on, on you know, numerous matters. And then in addition to that, if you do need additional learning support, so for example, if you're dyslexic, let's say, and you need some additional support, there's also an LSA um, team as well who can support with that. Not missed anything there, have I, Jane? No, I don't think so. No, I think that was all of them. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, muted myself. Um, if you do have any specific queries about that, um, you can email the marketing email address that I popped in the chat and I can pass any sort of specific queries onto the relevant teams for you um, if you would like. Uh, so the next question is, what type of clothing will they have to wear from day to day? So I suppose that varies depending whether they're on practicals or not, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Jane, I'll let you take this one. Um, yes, yeah, so obviously um, in the theory sessions, they will just wear their um, normal clothes. Um, we do um, expect a certain standard of dress though. Um, so have had to talk to a few students in the past about um, inappropriate dress. So do bear that in mind. Um, obviously when they're on the practicals, um, they will be wearing their PPE. So overall steel toe cap boots. Um, in bad weather, if you're outside, you might want some waterproofs as well, because we do spend quite a bit of time outside. Um, so some waterproofs would be very useful as well. Um, and if you've got long hair, it's really important that you tie that hair back um, out of the way and any jewellery is expected to be removed um, in those practicals as well. Yes, so uh, no crop tops or mini skirts, please. That would be great. <laughs> uh, and um, if you can't remove piercings, so let's say you've got, a, I don't know, a lip ring or something that you can't remove, uh, it is always best to have a small roll of um, like the micropore tape so you can cover it over for practicals because we can't have any exposed sort of piercings or hoops for practicals. Lovely, thank you so much. Um, let's 
Oh, I will also add to that that the kit lists are coming out in the student welcome pack. So if you have an offer, um, you'll get that in your student welcome pack. There'll be a QR code in there with a link to our website with all the information you could possibly need. Um, so look out for that in your student welcome pack. Um, right, next question. Do you get to drive tractors? I think that's probably more for an agriculture. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you are interested in that, maybe agriculture or countryside management or horticulture would would be uh, the course for you. <laughs> um, let's have a look. We've got an admissions query here, but I will answer that in the chat. Um, someone's asked what overalls and boots are required. So um, there aren't any specific brands that we ask for, are there? Um, no. So, that the, the kit list will be um, in the student welcome pack. Um, Just make, make sure any wellies or boots are still toe capped and, and um, you know, that's fine. Yes, it's more of a safety thing, isn't it? Um, so, uh, Oh, there's been a couple of admissions queries, so I'll just address these quickly. Um, someone said that they've got a friend who's offered a place but hasn't had a letter about enrolment or heard anything to do with starting the course. Um, so, yes, you can get in touch with someone if you've got any questions. So I would suggest getting in touch with um, our admissions team just to check that there's nothing wrong with the application and everything's gone through smoothly because um, there could be something that um, he's not aware of that might have held up the application. Um, but if he's had an offer, it should be fine and it'll be our enrolment team that you need to contact. So what I'll do is I'll pop both of the contacts for those teams in the chat so that you can email them and ask them any questions that you've got and they'll be more than happy to help. And also if you've had offers, just make sure you're accepting your offers as well, because sometimes if they're not accepted, you know, we don't always progress them forward with, with letters and things like that. So just make sure you've accepted any offers that you've had. Yeah, and you can do that just by emailing admissions uh, using the email address that's in the chat. Um, so yeah, if you do have any queries, um, our enrollment team have been dealing with our GCSE results, so um, they might take a couple of days to get back to you, but they'll, they're doing their best to get around to all their inquiries as soon as possible. Um, so the next question, um, we've kind of sort of um, answered this, but um, do you offer any support for those with learning disabilities? Um, yes, we do. Uh, we have an additional learning support team. Um, if you've got an offer um, and you're, you've been invited to enrolment, I would suggest bringing if you've got like a form eight or an EHDP or any further information that, that might be useful for us, please bring that to enrolment with you. So our additional learning support team can, can have a copy of that. Um, but yeah, we've got lots of different, lot of variety, haven't we? Of different um, sort of disabilities and learning disabilities. So yeah, yeah. cater for lots of things. <laughs> yes. Um, someone has said, how soon do you need to confirm um, a work? for work experience um it's been a bit tricky because obviously with with covid and everything else people haven't been able to get work experience so it has been a bit tricky but normally we like you to have done some hours by october half term just to show that you've you've got a placement and you're working on it so really uh, october half term is sort of the week commencing the 18th i think of october something like that um you know if you can have a few hours done by then that is kind of what we're looking for it just shows that you're committed and and you're wanting to do it I think the sooner you can get in somewhere and start as well and um, it's amazing how easily those hours then start to um, clock up and also if you leave it the places start to disappear as well so again if you get in early you're more likely to get somewhere that you want to go yeah because if you bear in mind we've got something like nearly 450 students mm. on animal care all looking for placements in the Leicestershire area so you've got to bear that in mind as well Absolutely, that's a great point actually. I never thought of that. Um, so next question, is the bus from Stevenson to study to Brooksby still running? If so, is it free or do I need to pay for it? So uh, we do have bus um, that goes from the Stevenson campus um, or Colville in general. Um, I don't believe that it's free. Um, it is a subsidised, so it will be sort of less than getting public transport. Um, but I will pop our transport team email in the chat for you um, and you, you can get in touch with them directly. Uh, Lydia did you have something to add? Yes so I think for previous Stevenson's students who are progressing with us so for example the level two animal care who would be progressing on to level three with us they are putting a direct coach on from the Stevenson's campus to us at Brooksby and I do believe uh, that that 
is a free service but please don't quote me on that I'm, I'm not 100 percent, but i have that has been the sort of discussion best thing to do like meg said is is to talk to transport and they'll be able to, to give you the, the correct information there as well mm -hmm. yeah absolutely our transport team is super helpful um, and they're definitely in the office this week so they'll be able to um help you with any queries that you've got and um, yeah good point lydia about um progressing students who were at Stevenson last year. I uh, didn't think about one. Um, oh, someone said, is it too late to come this year? No, it's not. <laughs> no, we're interviewing, so um, we've got some interviews happening next week. I think normally we're still interviewing right up until enrolment, aren't we? Sometimes yeah. even after enrolment, because we get so many. So absolutely not, keep, keep applying. Yeah, absolutely. We like to um, give everyone the opportunity, um, regardless of how late they apply. I think, um, Sort of once it gets sort of into September, definitely not after October half term, but um, no, yeah. No. <laughs> First week of term or so is probably the cutoff, really, because we don't want you guys missing out on too much and not being able to catch up. Yeah, and you've got to do things and stuff like that that you won't want to miss out on. Um, and um, just in case anyone's wondering, um, for September 2022, we won't start taking applications until about October time. Um, possibly usually is after October half term um, just so that we can sort of uh, get all of this uh, this year's applications um, polished off and sorted um, and then we'll open applications for next year um, but to keep an eye on our social media because we will absolutely announce um, as soon as we are starting to take applications for, for September. Um, so someone said so if you've got an offer letter your student pack will come a couple of days later um well if you've already got an offer your offer packs will be um coming shortly um and then anyone else who gets an offer after this um we may send the sort of all the information out to you digitally just because it'll be a bit um close to the start of term for us to get everything out in the post um so that's probably what we'll do in that situation Got some more questions. So uh, Melanie has asked, do you have to bring your GCSE results if you've sent it through email? So do they have to bring their GCSE results to enrollment with them even if they sent it through email? Ideally, yes. Um, it's really handy for me to be able to look at those on enrollment to make sure that I'm giving you the right advice and getting you on the right course from the start. So yes, please, if you've got your GCSEs or any other you know, qualifications that you've done, please bring your results with you for enrollment and then we can make sure we give you the right information. Lovely, thank you. Um, sorry, I'm losing my voice. <laughs> um, and also, if you can bring a form of photo ID as well to enrollment, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Um, so next question, uh, someone has said, if I was offered the level three but didn't get the grades required, what happens next? So um, we will kind of look at it on a case by case basis. We'll see what grades you got. Um, we'll see that if we feel comfortable still offering the level three or, or if actually, you know, you might be better suited to doing a level two for this year. You know, there are lots of options. So please don't worry. Please do um, give us a call. <laughs> Or, um, or come in on enrolment and we can sort you out, you know, to make sure you're on the right place. You know, if it's a case that you just missed it by a tiny little bit and actually you might be OK, it might be that we can pop you on, on the course that you were wanting and put you on a bit of a probationary period and see how it goes. And if you're struggling, we can pop you down to level two. And if you're flying through it, then we can we can keep you where you are. So so please yeah, get in touch and we can we can look at those. Absolutely. Um, so there is a bit of leeway there, isn't there? Um, someone's asking if they're only level two and level three that you can do. And no, we do have other courses. <laughs> so we start from level one in animal in animal care. So we've got level one, level two, level three, and then we go all the way up to level six. So we have a foundation degree and a BSc as well. We also um, are, are in the process of finalising our access to HE course, which is a a level three course aimed at um, probably aimed at more mature learners, I would say, who are wanting to go into HE, perhaps haven't been in education for a little while and just need that stepping stone up. Um, and then for the next academic year, we've also got a, a different BSc and foundation degree that we're starting for animal rehabilitation and veterinary nursing level three on the cards as well. So uh, much more than just your level two and your level three animal care. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's so many options, isn't there? It's fantastic. Um, so the current 
uh, degree we offer is animal management science and welfare isn't it and that'll be continuing next year um i will just um, add to that just because i know we get questions about this um the foundation degree is two years um and then the top degree is one year and doing both of those courses one after the other is equivalent to doing a full three year degree yeah um so i know that can be confusing <laughs> Um, we, I mean, we split it into the into the two years because, you know, some people don't actually they, they do the first two years and actually they get a job or they, they get a job through their work placement and they, they go on into employment and they'd rather do that. Some people like to stay and do the full BSc. So we like to have that option where people can if they want to, they can they can dip out or equally people who've done a foundation degree elsewhere can then join in for the third year as well. So we do get applicants who just join for that final year and um, to finish off if they've done a HND or a foundation degree elsewhere as well. So that's that's really valuable that we can we can offer that. And um, all the degree programmes are underwritten by uh, the University of East Anglia as well. So your certificate is a University of East Anglia certificate and uh, we follow all the same policies and procedures that they do. Fantastic, thank you. Um, so we've had another question. Um, OK, so someone's concerned because their level two results haven't arrived yet um, and they're just concerned about when it comes to enrollment, if they've still not received them, um, what would the situation there be? Um, um, <laughs> by enrollment. Hopefully you would receive them, yeah. Um, it obviously depends, um, you know, what qualification it is and stuff like that. But, we, you know, if your predicted grades were showing that, yes, you would have got the entry requirements, <laughs> Uh, you know, we've got a reference from an old an old lecturer or, or whatever process you've gone through there. You know, we can say, yeah, we'll enrol you provisionally again for those first six weeks, hoping that in that time the results come through and we can we can tick that box. So don't worry too much. Bring whatever you've got with you and uh, we'll go from there. Fantastic, thank you. Um, someone's asked a question that I'm just going to quickly answer. Um, what exactly comes in the student pack? Um, so the welcome pack. So it's basically just like some goodies, uh, branded goodies um, that um, you can use. So um, a pen, that kind of thing, um, sort of a multi port that you can plug like various different sort of chargers and AirPods and that kind of thing into. Um, and then we'll have um, a sheet in there, which is um, top 10 tips for starting college so how you can prepare and then the most important thing is the QR code which is on that sheet and that will link you to um, your induction week timetable and also any kit list uh, information so that should give you a good sort of basis before you come to enrollment to, to sort of understand how the first week can go for you. Um, it might be a little sorry Meg it might be a little different for animal because we've got so many groups um, I couldn't really give a a timetable <laughs> for the induction so you will get your days at enrollment when i know exactly what group you're in because otherwise i'd have been giving you like 14 different times it would have got really confusing so it's a little bit different for animal but the rest of it will, will all be the same so yeah so it mainly be your kit list then that comes uh with the qr yeah. code but yeah so uh next one oh and also the qr code will have a link to some uh important forms that you can fill in to bring to enrollment so like a photo permissions form um I think we're putting bursary forms in there so if you um well there's a link to a bursary form if you do need to apply for um, a bursary to cover any costs um so there's different things like that that is just can be useful for you to know before you join us uh next question is oh we've kind of covered a bit of this already but um i think some people <laughs> have slightly later um so we can go over it again that's not a problem um what animals do you have and what do you do with them <laughs> Jane, you want to take that one? Um, yeah, so we have quite a range um, going from some very small invertebrates all the way up to some quite large hoof stock. Um, so we've got um, tarantulas, stick insects, um, through to your snakes, your geckos, um, some larger lizards. Um, then we've got the furry, so we've got our rabbits, guinea pigs, um, quite a range of rodents. Um, we have staff dogs that come in for you to use. We've got the cats in the cattery. Uh, we have goats, alpacas. Um, we've got an aviary with some different bird species in. We've got the poultry. Um, we can also access some of the farm animals um, for some of the sessions that we do, um, particularly practical sessions. Um, at, I think it's level two, level three. 
and um, we can also access um, the equine um, area as well so we can um, have a little um, go with the horses and do some work with them. Um, things that we do with the animals, um, so health checking, um, grooming with some of them, um, that could take different methods depending on the type of animal, um, learning how to handle them safely, um, looking at the different feeding programs that are needed, um, enrichment provision for them. Um, later on in some of the um, second year modules level three, we do training with quite a few of the species as well. Um, I can't think. Um, looking at the accommodation that's provided for them. Uh, what else do we do? Oh, so much. <laughs> I can't think of all the things yeah. we do. In, uh, did you say health checking, weighing? Health checking, um, yeah, weighing. Um, and just socialisation as well with some of the, you know, yeah. the new ones that haven't been had much and yeah. stuff like that. So, yeah, lots of things going on. <laughs> yeah, it's such a, such a huge uh, question, isn't it? I'm sure there's lots of other stuff that you'll um, realise that you that we do if you uh, yeah. come along to like a, a physical open day or something like that. You'll be able to see more of what we do. Um, so over the welcome pack, does that come in the post? Oh, welcome packs. Um, they come in in the post. You don't have to collect them. Do not worry about that. Um, I think oh oh no, there's another one i was gonna say i think that's all the questions we've got at the moment but we do have another one and um, someone said do we come into the college for enrollment and um, also do we have to book to come in um so we've got an enrollment team who should have uh, they've created a timetable for enrollment and they will have um sent letters out with the times on i know a few people haven't received theirs yet and um, so you don't need to book at all it's something that we'll send to you your slot um, and it is coming in physically to the college. Um, if you can't make it, um, there will be an email address on your enrollment letter and you can email that and the enrollment <laughs> team in for um, a mop up enrollment slot essentially over the next couple of weeks um, after enrollment. Um, so yeah, just wait for that to come through. And if you um, have had an offer, but you don't receive your enrollment letter in the next couple of um, days, please do email our enrollment team. I will put the email in the chat for you today. Um, uh, give me one second. Um, and yeah, please email them and they'll be able to help you with that. Um, so I think that is actually all the questions we've got at the moment. If you have any more, please don't hesitate to pop them in the chat. Um, we're here for another sort of half an hour, um, well, about 25 minutes. So um, we're going to try and get around to all your questions for you. Um, so let's talk about. Um, we had interference there. Um, let's talk about some frequently asked questions. So things that we often get asked um, sort of um, when we go out to schools and meet a lot of students. Um, so if a student lives far away, are they able to get to us using a bus, like a college bus? Um, and do we find a lot of students do that? Do students come from, from various parts of the county? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Jane, carry on. <laughs> um, yeah, so we, we have students that come from quite far afield. So um, I think we've had students coming from Grantham, um, uh, quite way into Nottingham County as well. Um, and there is usually um, good bu bus provision um, outside of the wider area, uh, sorry, outside of the central area. Um, so looking at those wider, wider areas. Um, and quite often, if we've had enough coming from an area, sometimes we've we've actually put that provision on. And um, so quite often it does depend on the requirements of that academic year. Um, but yeah, I would say it's um, fairly accessible from most areas around. Absolutely, definitely. And I think the 5A bus that um, comes from Leicester goes to both of our campuses as well. So yeah. you're right. Um, I say both of our campuses, I mean the Melton campus and the Brooksby campus. Yeah. Um, so someone, oh, Amy has asked, are you expecting any new animals? Lydia? <laughs> so, um, we are waiting desperately, I know Meg's desperate as well, we are waiting desperately for our new baby pygmy goats who uh, were due with us at the end of July and they hadn't quite weaned yet, so um, we're just we're just holding five for those, we're all super excited for that, so they should be with us, I would hope, by the time we start. Um, we've just been given quite a nice um, amount 
of, of money to put into our animal care unit so to increase our livestock as well so i know that we're getting more sort of exotic rodent type uh, mammals we've also got large big plants for more exotic sort of zoo type species as well or within the next year or so so yes lots of changes lots of new exciting things to look out for so meg is all over social media with them all the time aren't you meg so if you keep an eye on the social media as soon as we get anything new i'm sure it will be all over there as well for you to look at absolutely yeah um i'm going to use this opportunity to plug our tiktok <laughs> um, so we are at smb college group on tiktok instagram uh facebook twitter linkedin so um, and then we also have a YouTube as well called SMB College Group. So check out all of those. Um, we're most active on TikTok and Instagram. Um, so yeah, any new animals will absolutely be on there as soon as they arrive. <laughs> um, so we've had a few more questions sort of um, coming through. Oh, someone's just said, what bus did you say comes from laughter? That's the 5A. Um, do you help with finding work experience? Um, I think we answered that earlier, but we can answer that again. Yeah, yeah. So. go on Jane, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, so we do, we keep um, quite a big list of um, places that we've used previously, um, and we can help and support students with um, seeking their work placement. We do try and encourage you to do it a little bit independently, um, because it's um, setting those skills for when you actually start applying for jobs um, after you've finished your courses. Um, but yeah, we um, some of those places that we've got listed will already be health and safety checked. Um, and if they're not, or if that provision has lapsed, um, they will be health and safety checked before you start working there. But it is definitely something we can support with. Fantastic, thank you. Um, sorry, I think I've missed a question that came through. So let me just find that. Um, oh, someone has said um, they found out today that they have failed their maths. Um, can they retake it alongside the course? Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, Jane. Uh, yes, absolutely. So um, the we have got a maths and English or a yeah maths and English team who you, you know you can do your GCSE again. You can do both <coughs> your skill maths and English, uh, maths or English again as well. So yeah, please don't worry about that. Um, we're more than happy to help you get those get those important qualifications as well. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, next question is, um, can you still do the course if you're scared of animals? Or uh, I would suppose... recommend it just all <laughs> animals, uh, but if you're scared of, let's say spiders, for example, which is a common one, yeah, absolutely. We will not force you to work with an animal you're scared with. We will try as best we can to make suitable arrangements for, you know, methods of assessment and stuff like that. However, um, you will probably find that, yes, you might start the you might start worried about spiders you will probably leave having handled them you know that tends to be you know what happens people sort of think oh actually it's not so bad and you know bob's doing it so i'll have a go at doing it as well and you know it and um one of our lecturers belinda who deals with most of the exotics is very good at being very comforting and uh, getting you on with handling these animals and uh, yeah it's such a big achievement to see people sort of faking a bit of a smile or while they're taking their photo with a, a tarantula in their hand but yeah absolutely I mean if you're scared of everything it's probably not for you but if you're just scared of like I don't know something we can, we can help you with that so please don't worry yeah perfect thank you I think every time we do one of these Q&A's we always get someone who's scared of something or other so <laughs> and uh, most people are all right in the end aren't they uh let me just check I think we've dealt with all these ones then we've got some new ones that have come through. Uh, do the animal care students get to look after any of the animals on the farm? I know they definitely help during lambing season don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah absolutely so our level three year two students have a farming module so like a, a subject which is farming so they will go down and they will they will work with, with the farm um, technicians and and work with the livestock down there as well so yes you do get to do um, you get to help and then lambing season uh, we, we do like to get everybody down there because it's, it's just lovely to do that as well so yeah you will get some some look in down there on the farm absolutely fantastic thank you um next one what are the first few days of college like um do you go straight into learning or do you have like class bonding or like uh, sort of induction activities 
Jane, do you want to take that one? Um, so we do, um, I presume we're doing it this year, um, the induction week um, where we go through things like um, uh, timetables and yeah, different kind of activities where you get to meet the people in your group and um, get to know your way around college. Um, so that's usually done the week before um, teaching starts. Um, then once we yeah. start teaching, we're straight into lessons then. Yeah, so the, the week commencing the um, 30th of 30th. August, the bank holiday week, that is induction week. So you're in for a couple of days there. Um, and then after that, like Jane said, week commencing the 6th, you're straight into your teaching. We'll take it easy on you for the first week, you know, get you in there nice and steady. But yeah, we're, we're in normal lessons and, you know, bring your notebooks. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, thank you. Uh, so Joe has asked, will I be able to drive up to the animal care building um, and is there any student car parking um, at that part of the site? So we've um, got student car parking down at um, the main site, um, but students on the FE programme are not allowed to drive up to the unit. That's good. I didn't actually know that. Um, so we do have many buses going back and forth, don't we, throughout the day, yes, from, totally. uh, sort of the main site up up to Hives, which is where right. yeah. <laughs> um, we do say we try, try to decrease the traffic on the internal road because it's quite narrow, and um, we have many buses going back and forth. But just the car park. yeah, and also yeah. you know the car park at Animal Care isn't that large, and if you've got many buses turning around and stuff like that, it, it can get a bit tricky as well. Yeah. So it's best to best and safer for everybody if we if we have no students driving up that internal road absolutely um so next question what uh kind of enrichment activities um and trips and stuff like that do students do so um last year and the year before have been rubbish let's be honest because of COVID, we can't go anywhere we can't do anything fun but uh, it's sort of we got a bit of light at the end of last year and we managed in the last couple of weeks I think everybody went on a trip not me I didn't get to but everybody else did so there was a Twycross Zoo, London Zoo, uh, Whipsnade as well, um, yeah. Tropical Birdland, the monkey yeah. one, the one at Rutland um, <laughs> yeah. one? went to Rutland Zoo yeah, Rutland Zoo. So yeah, we get out as much as we can. Um, we will be having enrichment afternoons, which will be a Wednesday afternoon where we will be putting on some enrichment that you can sign yourselves up for. So whether that is something like, um, you know, building animals enrichment, so that the toys that go into their enclosures or doing artwork or something that's just a bit different, uh, but you can, you know, make new friends and, and you know, do new activities and then yeah as many trips and visits as we can because we love them just as much as you guys love them so we try and get you out as much as we possibly can. I think sport are really good as well aren't they at putting cross college enrichment on so they put lots of different things on um, and then there's usually access to the gym as well um, for students. Yeah. And um, and the sports um, teams as well um, so that's kind of been opened up more or across campus rather than just being the sports students who are on the, the, the rugby team or whatever. It's been opened up a little bit more as well. Fantastic, thank you. Um, let's see, a few more questions. Um, do you offer any other courses alongside at the level? Oh, so can you do more than one course um, <coughs> whilst alongside the animal course? We have some so short courses. Oh, God, yeah. sorry. No, sorry. <laughs> can't do like a full-time course alongside, you just would never fit it all in. But we do run evening courses, so Jane, you run a um, dog psychology uh, mm -hmm. course, short course, it's like a six-week evening course. We have an um, animal physiotherapy evening course. We do some short dog grooming sort of taster sessions as well. Um, and there's always new new bits popping up. So I think Belinda did like a falconry one for a little while, um, an animal photography one. You know, so there's all sorts of little bits that you can add on but you wouldn't be able to do sort of two full-time courses at the same time you, you drive yourself mad trying to do all that absolutely yeah <laughs> especially if you've got to do a maths or an english alongside <laughs> yeah absolutely and yeah. your work experience <laughs> and work experience yeah. <laughs> um, so someone has asked if i find that i want to change courses will i be able to do that um as i've i've applied for another course and now i'd like to do animal care 
Um, yeah, I mean, we're still taking applications, so you will have to reapply because um, we'll need like a new personal statement from you to say why you want to do animal care. Um, but that's absolutely not a problem at all. Um, yeah, and if, if mid course, well, not mid course, but if within those sort of first six weeks of term or first few weeks of term, you're like, actually, this isn't for me, actually, I probably should have done sport or whatever it is, you know, we can look at transferring you to a different programme if it's suitable as well. Yeah. Um, so next one. All right, just making sure I've covered everything. Um, next question. Do we have lockers to leave our overall slash steel cap boots or will we have to carry them to college um, for each practical day? So there are lockers to leave them in during the day, but it's kind of like on a public swimming bath kind of term. Do you know what I mean? So you can borrow it. You can't leave your stuff in there. They will be emptied at the end of each day um, to make sure it's fair for everybody so that everybody has a chance to stick their stuff in there during the day when they've, they've got their practicals. So it will be a case of, you know, taking them home, washing them, bringing them back in. So it's advisable to get yourselves a, a small padlock, either a key one or a, even better, so you don't lose your key, one of the ones with the numbers on. Um, and then you can lock your own locker. Um, but, but stuff will be removed at the end of each day to make sure it's fair for everybody because we just haven't got, we've got sort of 400 students and not enough lockers for all of them to have one each. To be honest, you do need to be taking your um, overalls home to wash anyway, because um, quite often the smells of different animals can affect the animal you work with next, um, as well as cross-contamination. Yeah, absolutely. So if you've been working with rodents, then you go into the snakes. It Could can be. <laughs> and equally vice versa it can be quite stressful for the rodents if you've been in with the reptiles and then you're going into them so yeah absolutely take them home wash them same with your lab coats as well there are lockers um in the lab sort of corridor that you can borrow to put your stuff in during the day uh, when you're in your lab lessons but your lab coats will need to go home if you can be washed after your practicals <coughs> Great point i would have thought of that as a non-animal care expert so <laughs> very good point um so someone else has asked uh, is there anything they can do um sort of over the summer to prepare for the course so are there any textbooks that you recommend um obviously yeah, sort of getting yeah. a uniform and stuff like that but um in terms of preparing academically yeah for the level three there is a btech revision guide um i'll see if i can find the amazon link and put it in the chat in a second but there's a btech revision guide that i would recommend everybody gets um just to help you prepare for your exams and stuff like that there isn't one at the minute for level two um so for the level two you know just be reading around your general sort of animal husbandry guidelines you know look on the rspca website they've got some really helpful um sort of log sheets on there haven't they activity yeah. sheets and things like that um so you know be looking at stuff like that um, and I'll see if I can find the link for the the other textbook for level three and pop it on. And if you're HE and you're coming to us, as much reading as you can do of, of any subject beforehand is going to be really helpful. Um, equally, for level two, thinking about it, you know, if you've, if you've done GCSEs and you've got your GCSE biology textbooks, be getting those out and having a look through those as well. Just refresh yourself. Uh, I think that'd be really helpful. Fantastic, thank you. A uh, couple more questions. How long have we got for left? So we've got about 10 minutes left. So um, this is your sort of last chance to get your questions in um, for us to actually be able to answer them before we end. Um, so someone's asked, what type of work do you do on the course? Quite a broad question, um, but maybe we could talk about sort of how much of the course is practical and how much um, mm -hmm. is more complex. I know a lot of people um, do ask that and it can be quite different to sort of school work. On yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, the amount of practical varies um, depending on which course you're on. So, you know, that is that is different, but there are lab practicals as well as animal related practicals. Um, so there's a of different um, you know, activities. It might be that, you know, in the lab you might you might do some dissections and stuff like that. You don't have to do dissections if you are if you are not comfortable with that. You know, we can give you a different activity or something like that to do. Um, but a lot of the time, people actually watch from a distance and then come in and join in and actually really enjoy it. Um, we don't we don't buy animals in specifically for dissections. You know, these are animals that have perhaps died naturally at our animal care centre, and um, you know, we then use we then use them. 
Um, so if, you know, we have lab practicals as well as animal care practicals. I think the level three, I think you could probably roughly say it's about 70% theory, 30% practical, something like that. Um, the level two, a little bit more practical than the level three. And then the level one again, um, a little bit more practical than that. Fantastic, thank you. Um, so Joe has asked, can we bring our own animals in? <laughs> Afraid not, no. Um, there is just obviously too much risk involved with that, with you know cross contamination and fights and and all sorts of other um all sorts of other things but uh, no afraid not no none of your own animals but you will have plenty <laughs> to uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> plenty to go at yeah so there's there's no need um is there someone we can contact if we think of any other questions after this has ended yes um i will pop that in the chat um shortly we'll also publish this uh, recording on our YouTube channel so you can watch it back if you think like oh I forgot the answer to that question um, you can um, have that available for you as well uh, so next question um, if we've accepted recently how long will it take to get an enrollment date um, so our enrollment team should be sort of checking periodically um, and sending their uh, enrollment letters out there's pretty much just sort of a standard date um, so if you have applied for a specific course um, You'll just be invited everyone from that course will be invited in on the same day um so it's not like we sort of have to slot you in specifically um we'll just send you a letter as soon as we know that you've got an offer um with your enrollment date on for your course so um as i said the enrollment team will be just checking periodically um and sending new batches of letters out so um pretty quickly we would hope <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Level one and level two, um oh, sorry a bit of feedback there level one and level two are the um 23rd of august and level three is the 24th of august from sort of half past eight till one o'clock on both of those days thank you um someone has asked um will there be any trips or visits on the course um, we have sort of gone over that but um if we want to just um briefly say have we got any specific trips planned at the moment um for sort of first time I don't think there's any specifics, um, but you'll sometimes find that actually within a lesson you might go out to visit a local premises as part of the um, module. Um, so certainly in one of the level three modules, you'll go out and visit local boarding kennels and rescue centres. Um, so that's something that goes on. Um, and then obviously we have our bigger trips where we go out for the day, um, maybe to a zoo or um, we quite often go to Crufts or shows like that as well. Um, I would imagine with the new farming module, we might go out to some agricultural shows and things like that as well. Um, so, yeah, there, there will be quite a range that goes on over the year. Um, potentially also looking as things get back to normal into um, perhaps some residential um, ones as well, short residentials um, as things get more back to normal. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's very, very exciting things uh, going on uh, in terms of trips. Um, you also had a really fun charity day recently, didn't you? Um, for all the students, which looked amazing. Um, yes, uh, it wasn't so amazing when we were being hit in the face with wet sponges. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we had a yeah, we had a sort of um, end of end of year you know we've done it's kind of celebration and and any proceeds we we raised went to um, a charity called street vet which is a um, veterinary service for homeless people's animals if that makes sense mm -hmm. um one of our colleagues works with them as a vet veterinary nurse um so it's you know really valuable service that gets offered so i think we raised nearly 200 pounds just from having sponges and thrown at us and making cakes, which was great. So, um, you know, yeah, we're really good fun and certainly something that will be happening uh, that will continue to happen in coming years. Well, that sounds amazing. Um, we're also um, a hedgehog friendly campus, aren't we? And I think some of the proceeds went to to that charity. So we're always yes. to yeah. increase um, hedgehog friendly sort of areas around our campus. Um, looks. It's just um, also learning about wildlife, isn't it, as well as sort of animals that are more. Um, someone has asked if I live near the Stevenson campus, but 
I want to do animal care, would there be transport available? Um, so I'll just quickly reiterate what we said earlier, um, which is um, if you studied Stephen, uh, animal care at Stevenson last year um, and you're progressing with us at Brooksby campus this year, then there is a bus um, available for you and that will be free. But if not, um, we do have college buses with a stop in Colville um, that is sort of subsidised. So it's sort of cheap, cheaper than using public transport and it's just a SMB college group bus that will help you to get to the Brooksby campus. Um, and you can contact our transport team um, to find out more. So it's just transport at smbgroup.ac.uk and I'll pop that in the chat as well. Um, so next question. Um, I'll be doing the level three animal management course. I'm now doing some volunteering. Would I only be able to volunteer one day a week um, as the course is runs over four days? So the level three courses are a sort of timetable for three days of the week. So you have two days uh, to do work experience and course work and whatever else you want. And obviously you've got the weekends as well. So you, you can, uh, the more volunteering you can do, the better. Yeah. Yeah, particularly if it's um, animal related, they could probably use that for their work experience hours. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. You can count it towards uh, your actual college course, which is fantastic. <laughs> um, so, oh, someone's just asked if we can clarify the day for enrolment for level three. So I can pop them in the chat. What are they again? It's the um, the twenty third of August from sort of eight thirty until one pm for level one and two, mm -hmm. and then it is the twenty fourth of August again from eight thirty to one pm for level three. Uh, but, but you should have your letters uh, telling you that as well. So um, hopefully an email or a letter will have come to you with that information on. Yeah. So um, as I said before, if you've not received that, just um, please get to our enrolment team um, but you won't have received it if you've not actually had an offer yet so you might be thinking oh I've had an interview um, I should have my enrolment letter not necessarily and um, you actually have to have an offer from our admissions team um, before our enrolment team will see that you've been offered a place. Oh hello! <laughs> <laughs> I wondered where you'd appear. She always sneaks in on these things yeah. <laughs> oh <laughs> what a so I think this is the last question we've got time for actually. Um, is are there any funding or bursaries available? Um, so yes. <laughs> yeah, so there are um subject to um household income and things like that, there are bursaries available. Um funding as well, you, you know, there is um funding for sort of first level free programs and things like that, depending on your age and your your own financial situation. So <laughs> so yeah, um absolutely if you want any more information about that please get in touch and we'll be able to point you in the right direction yeah definitely um just to sort of add to that if you're a school leaver you don't have to pay anything you're funded for three years of further education it's just if you get um sort of to the 19 plus level that's when fees and funding and stuff like that sort of uh, comes into play really um but bursaries are available for students who are 16 and above um and then also, you've, um, if you are a mature learner, there's also the advanced learner loan uh, that you can apply for, which is a bit like student finance, but it's a different system. Um, and, you know, there is that funding available and that loan system available for you as well. Yeah, that's a fantastic option. Um, so I will pop that in the chat as well. <laughs> so, um, one last question we've just got that we can just quickly answer before we um, uh, end the chat uh, and the Q&A sorry um, someone said they're slightly confused as they um, will be enrolling on the level three and they've been told that their enrollment date is on the 23rd um, but we've just said differently don't worry I would just say maybe come along to the enrollment slot you've been given by the enrollment team yeah um, so um because the same sort of tutors will be running both days well you'll be around for both days so, and some people will be changing between levels depending on their grades and stuff um over those two days yeah just pop pop in on either day really it's uh, we'll be there <laughs> fantastic i think that's all we've got time for today um glad we've got an appearance of lovely uh, daisy daisy, daisy. <laughs> showing us the gorgeous face um so yeah thank you so much to lydia and jane for helping us with our Day. and thank you to everyone who's joined us um, and provided some questions to answer. We hope you've had um, 
a great virtual open day experience um, and found all the information you need to know. Um, if you have any further questions, please get in touch um, with our course inquiries team. I will pop the email address in the chat. Uh, they will be um, in the office tomorrow, so they'll be able to answer any questions you've got if um, you think of any at a later time. So, and yeah, you can still apply for September as well, so please um, go over to our website to do that if you are interested. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs>